Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you uh, to the eighth lecture of uh, this uh, NPTEL MOOCs course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, this is eighth lecture overall and it is the second lecture of module 3. So, today we will talk about uh, the second lecture on post traumatic growth. So, before we discuss uh, about today's lecture, let me have a brief recap of the last lecture that is lecture 7. So, in the last lecture, uh, we have discussed that uh, there are many chances of or stress may have many positive effects also apart from various negative effects that we have already discussed in last few lectures and uh, which is uh, generally it is difficult to observe or detect the positive effect of stress uh, uh, because we are not really you know paying much focus in that direction. However, generally we have discussed that in uh, that there can be three pos possible ways in which stress can you know have a positive impact in our life or can have positive effects. One we have discussed that you no know, uh, stress satisfies our basic need for stimulation. So, this is very important stress kinds of stimulates and motivates us to do lot of activities in our life. And also we have discussed the second important effects of positive effects of stress is that you know today's stress can inoculate you or prepare you for the future stress. So, facing stress uh, today may prepare you for the future stress because you know how to deal with uh, stressful situation. And the third uh, positive effect that uh, we have discussed is you know that stress can facilitate self improvement and psychological growth because of facing you know uh, uh, difficulties and uh, adversities of life or stressful circumstances in life. Uh, so, in that context we have discussed one particular concept called post traumatic growth uh, uh, in the last lecture just like we have post traumatic stress and post traumatic stress disorder there is a possibility of post traumatic growth so which basically means positive psychological changes that are experienced by people as a result of struggle with challenging life circumstances and uh, we have discussed that the reports of ptg are quite common it is not only experienced by few extraordinary people and we have also discussed that post traumatic growth and post traumatic stress can co occur together and that is these are not two extreme ends of a spectrum rather both can coexist together. And then we discussed that PTG is different from similar concepts such as thriving, flourishing, resilience, recovery uh, where the major difference lies in the fact that post traumatic growth happens only in context of traumatic events. Other concepts uh, such as thriving and flourishing can happen uh, in general life situations also. Then we have discussed there are five domains that of post traumatic growth that are reported by people uh, and uh, that include you know increased appreciation for life in general, more intimate and meaningful relationships, sense of more personal strength new possibilities in life and spiritual and existential growth. So, these are five broad domains uh, which captures post traumatic growth in most of the research findings. And then we have discussed that uh, 
there is a relationship between post traumatic stress and growth in the sense that relationship is not uh, not very you know simple it is a very complex relationship and uh, most of the research shows you know there is need for the presence of post traumatic stress in the beginning is actually essential for stimulation of ptg to happen and uh, most of the research shows there is a positive relationship between post traumatic stress and post traumatic growth and then we have discussed that post traumatic growth is reported after you know diverse traumatic events including various personal traumatic experiences such as medical problem you know uh, you know personal losses uh, and so many other aspects also people have been reported in the various job and uh, work contest also where people you know there are inherently stressful jobs such as military police you know emergency workers etc so ptg has been reported by in almost you know various diverse traumatic after you know experiencing diverse traumatic events uh and also secondary traumatic events uh, experiences can also stimulate ptg which basically means by witnessing a traumatic experience in others life can also stimulate ptg uh, research also shows uh, some evidence in that direction also so these are some of the major concepts that we have discussed in the last class so today we'll talk about uh, some of the other aspects of post traumatic growth uh, particularly we'll try to understand theoretical uh you know, aspects of post traumatic growth and we'll try to understand how uh ptg actually happens or takes place or unfolds within human being uh you know what are the mechanisms of it so we'll see some of the theoretical models and try to explain uh ptg in light of those models so these are some of the topics that we'll discuss we'll discuss three models of ptg we'll discuss process of ptg using two theoretical models and we'll also discuss uh, the relationship between ptg and well being uh, we'll also talk about ptg and wisdom what is the relationship and at last we'll talk about what are the ways we can facilitate by which we can facilitate or promote ptg so Jenof uh, Bulman in 2004 uh, she is one of the prominent trauma researcher uh, in her commentary to one of the articles of Tedeschi and Calhoun where they have discussed the model of their post traumatic growth she said there can be three possible explanatory models for post traumatic growth three possible explanatory model so the first model she said is strength through suffering so this model is basically you know part of our collective consciousness and collective cultural narratives th that this is very much commonly prevailing in collective understanding of human being uh, which are reflected into various phases such as you know no pain no gain and we have already discussed the nietzsche statement that which does not kill us makes us stronger uh, these are all reflective of this collective understanding that people develop strength through suffering and ptg is basically that aspect what happens as a result of struggling with traumatic experience mostly survivors becomes aware of their hidden strengths and potentials and develop newer skills and coping abilities uh, that leads to new sense of confidence courage and possibilities in life so while struggling with traumatic events or stressful circumstances of life many survivors who report ptg are basically you know they become aware of their hidden potentials or while struggling with those difficulties they develop newer skills Uh, which were kind of lacking before the traumatic event or at least they were not aware of them and this newer skills and abilities that they kind of find while struggling with the traumatic events are kind of experienced as post traumatic growth which increases you know more courage confidence and possibilities of life which are actually dimensions of ptg however this awareness of 
uh, hidden potentials and inner potentials and development of new skills and understandings and insight is not an easy process. It is a very painful process because you are dealing and struggling with a traumatic event. Uh, so, it happens after a lot of struggle. So, that is why the word struggle is there. So, it is not easy, it is painful process and many people you know after this long struggle and painful process come out victorious in the sense you know they kind of uh, become a new person in some sense by developing newer skills and newer insights. The second model she said uh, by which we can explain PTG uh, is using uh, the concept of PTG as a kind of psychological preparedness. So, psychological preparedness basically means you know uh, after as a result of struggle with the traumatic experiences, survivors are actually generally better prepared for the subsequent or future hardships and is likely to be less traumatized by the future trauma. So, but that is basically uh, the idea of preparedness. So, once you face or encounter or navigate through a stressful or you know life crisis, it prepares you mentally in terms of you develop a mental makeup or psychological structure, uh, which kinds of you know becomes much more strong in the sense that it will be less traumatized when similar thing happens in future, because you have already gone through it and experienced it. So, you are kind of inoculated or kind of vaccinated against it. So, that is the whole idea of you know uh, uh, this model actually is in li line with one model called stress inoculation model proposed by you know Meichenbaum in 1985, uh, where you know the idea is you know experience of today's stress can prepare you for the future stress. So, it is kinds of uh, develops a kind of preparedness and immunity against uh, future uh, traumatic event or stressful event. So, in PTG a uh, lot of PTG reports are actually like that. So, you become more stronger in the sense you know you become more prepared for uh, future psychological traumatic experiences. And this typically happens uh, according to you know Jenna Bowman uh, by rebuilding our assumptive world. So, when traumatic events happens, uh, we will see the process in more detail in the next model and that our whole psychological structures get shattered and then we rebuild it again. So, this rebuilding if it goes in the right direction is experienced as a kind of post traumatic growth. So, the, your new world psychological world will include all this traumatic experience. So, whenever they happen in the future, uh, you are less likely to be shocked by them. So, that is the meaning of psychological preparedness. So, here PTG is seen as a rebuilding of the assumptive world, our mental world, which includes beliefs, you know schemas, understandings that accounts that traumatic experiences and their future possibilities resulting in more shock proof schemas. So, this is one of the as another explanation of how PTG is experienced. The third model uh, uh, which uh, is in line with various reports of post traumatic growth is existential reevaluation. Uh, so, it basically uh, deals with meaning making process after the traumatic event. So, human beings constantly tries to make sense of the event. So, whenever a traumatic event happens, people try to make sense of it, why it has happened, why it has happened to me. So, these are the questions people ask constantly to make sense of the event. So, and many times traumatic events are difficult to make sense, uh, that is why they are so traumatic and distressing. So, human beings are meaning making animals and the traumatic events may cause an existential crisis by threatening the meaning of life. So, whenever a meaning structure by which we make sense of this world is threatened and shattered by traumatic event, it causes distress and crisis in life. Uh, and PTG is a kind of you know evolves out of 
destruction of the older meaning structure and formation or rebuilding of new meaning structure. So, Jenof Mulman uh, 2004 uh, discusses two types of meaning that defines the struggle of survivors aftermath of a traumatic event. So, there could be two types of meaning making process working after traumatic event. Uh, one is uh, meaning as comprehensibility and meaning as significance. So, immediately after the traumatic event, survivors are concerned with the meaning as comprehensibility. Basically, they try to understand what has happened, you know, why it has happened, you know. So, that comprehension, that try to understand what has happened. So, they struggle to comprehend or make sense of the traumatic event. They may ask why it happened. Consequently, the survivors may engage with the meaning as significance. So, after that, they will try to understand what is the significance of it in my life. So, then slowly, slowly this kind of meaning process may evolve into PTG. Uh, if you can make a coherent meaning structure aftermath of traumatic event. So, this meaning making process may lead survivors to reevaluate their life. So, they kind of reevaluate again what has happened and find newer meaning at the face of probably you know loss and meaninglessness. So, there is a paradoxical thing in the context of trauma. Trauma may create a sense of meaninglessness in life, create a sense of loss, but many times people after processing after some certain time uh, at the face of that meaninglessness they may find newer meanings in their life you know by reevaluating their life structures. Uh, some may engage in spiritual, religious, existential questions uh, that we have already discussed in the dimensions of PTG in the last class uh, that may also stimulate growth in certain dimensions. So, these are the three explanatory models proposed by Jenof Bullman by which we can understand or explain PTG that are reported by post pip survivors of trauma. Now, Tedeschi and Calhoun uh, they proposed uh, a model called functional descriptive model of post-traumatic growth in order to explain PTG in more detailed and the process of PTG more in more detail. So, that is called as a functional descriptive model of post-traumatic growth. So, we will briefly try to understand what are the processes involved in it according to this model uh, because this is one of the most popular model you know in the academic circle at least. So, in that model they used a metaphor of earthquake to explain post traumatic growth or the process of post traumatic growth. So, they propose that you know traumatic events are like seismic event like earthquake events uh, in our mental world that shatters our assumptive world just like the earthquake shatters the physical structure. So, they said uh, as whenever we experience earthquakes, uh, generally what happens after earthquake is you know it shatters all the physical structures that we see in our environment. So, it kinds of you know destroys. Similarly, traumatic events are like earthquakes or seismic events in our mental world and the outcome of such seismic event is that it shatters or destroys our mental structures. Now, what is our mental structure here is basically our assumptive world, our core belief systems, our schemas by which we understand the world. So, we may have many, many belief system about or certain assumptions about the world, about myself, about my future. So, we all have various you know core belief systems. Uh, you may think that my life is secure or my future is bright or we have no, I have many support, uh, you know, positive support system around me. So, you may have all these unconscious, you know, assumptions and beliefs about your world. But whenever a traumatic event happens, a lot of this belief system and assumptions kind of shatters. So, after a traumatic event, you may no longer see your life is sa secure and safe, uh, simply because your security is taken away by a traumatic event. Uh, so, you may not see your future as bright after a traumatic event. So, it shatters a lot of these core ideas and so, these mental structures are shattered by traumatic events. Uh, 
and these assumptions which is to give meaning in your life now it is kind of destroyed so it creates at least temporarily a sense of meaninglessness and confusion now this threat and shattering of assumptive world give rise to significant psychological distress so generally all the distress and ptsd symptoms that we see are result of this shattering of our assumptive world our core belief systems they extended this metaphor uh, again to the rebuilding that takes place after the trauma so generally what happens you know uh, if you are intelligent enough we learn from an experience then after an earthquake generally the physical rebuilding that we do will be designed to be more resistant to future shocks generally if we learn something from a let's an earthquake or an event then we'll try to rebuild our physical structure in such a way that if such earthquake happens in future our buildings are not shattered or destroyed so this is a natural uh, outcome of our understanding and our intelligence so similarly in the mental world the cognitive rebuilding that takes place after the trauma uh, will be more resistant to future shocks because this schemas or mental world or assumptive world new world that will uh, not build will incorporate the trauma and possible events in future and that are more resistant to being shattered these results are experienced as growth so it is possible that you know in the physical world how we rebuild again as a learning process and we make more resistant shock buildings as a learning experience similarly in our mental world when we rebuild our mental structures again they will be more strong and more resistant to future shocks that is kind of a translated as post traumatic growth so this is an analogy they have given uh, in order to explain how ptg has happened uh, then uh, they have you know kind of you know explained the detailed process which will be you know look look into so before that i'll just you know diagrammatically show what is this analogy little bit you know so that it, it is more clear so what they are saying basically
So, this is kind of analogy that they kind of try to you know explain using these two analogy of. Mm -hmm. So, one is earthquake analogy that we have already discussed, shattering of physical building, traumatic event, shattering of mental structure, here shattering of physical structure. Earthquake if it is, if you really learn from an experience, then physical rebuilding will be much more stronger or more resistant to future shocks. Similarly, uh, if we process traumatic event in the positive direction or the proper direction or all the proper supportive system is in place, then cognitive or mental rebuilding that we will do after traumatic event will be more stronger and more resistant to future traumatic events or future shocks. So, this is the analogy. Uh, now, they have used this model to explain the process of PTG. Uh, it looks very complicated, but actually it is not that complicated. Uh, the process is very simple. So, basically what happens after a seismic event basically means traumatic event. So, after a traumatic event obviously, you know there are naturally we experience a lot of distress and which causes many challenges in our life in terms of management of emotional distress. So, a lot of emotional distress happens how to manage that this is one of the problem or challenges that we experience our fundamental belief schemas and goals are shattered. So, that also creates a chaos and confusion in our life. Our life narratives is destroyed which is connected to schemas and understanding of the world. So, all these challenges causes lot of this you know kind of creates all this distress and challenges which needs to be tackled. So, one of the natural outcome of such challenges is that you no know, people experiences lot of rumination or automatic thoughts and intrusive thoughts. So, which we have discussed in PTSD also that people automatically re experience lot of traumatic event related uh, you know memories and stimuli related in you know uh, thoughts and uh, you know thoughts particularly. So, that is rumination automatic intrusive thoughts you are not able to handle and control it too much of thoughts are coming after the traumatic events. Uh, which is natural process and we all go through it, uh, but you know if certain support, support structure are around you particularly you know if you do self disclosure or you talk about it, you discuss about it uh, with people around you at least you find some outlet of your emotional experiences. So, that you can you know explain what is happening to you and talk about it or you have proper social network around you which is also connected to self disclosure who are giving you support in the at that time of crisis. So, this will kind of help you or any other constructive coping strategies you can involve in all this will help you to manage your overwhelming emotional experiences and it will reduce emotional distress help you to manage all these ruminative thoughts uh, and slowly slowly you know one will kind of come into more senses and right frame of mind to process it and disengage from the older goals and start a new chapter in life. So, this is basically rumination more deliberate in the sense it will become more reflective thoughts where you will be more consciously thinking about what has happened and what more needs to be done in the future and new schemas developed new narratives also develop. So, as a process of that you know PTG happens and which can be also connected to the concept of wisdom that we will see later and with PTG uh, the distress may still coexist together. So, this is uh, some of the uh, you know the uh, main mechanism some of the processes involved in PTG. Uh, later he you know developed this model little bit more using much more little bit more factors such as socio cultural factors, uh, but this is the main important factors that we need to look at. So, uh, basically this model says the traumatic event challenges shatters assumptive world leading to distress and automatic intrusive ruminative thoughts. Engagement in coping responses and intense cognitive processes to manage overwhelming emotions. So, that is the next thing that is actually required for PTG to happen proper coping strategies has to be you know uh, there in order to reduce the emotional distress. Uh, social support and self disclosure uh, supports the process of growth by reducing emotional distress. So, these two are important in terms of reducing the emotional distress and taking you to the right frame of mind to process things in the right direction. 
uh, ruminative thoughts changes to reflective thoughts. That means, uh, reflective thoughts are more conscious and deliberate. Now, it is no longer automatic intrusive thoughts without your control. Uh, that leads to newer schema change and more newer narrative development, which finally leads to post-traumatic growth. PTG is also closely connected to the development of wisdom. Uh, so, you become more wise out of by learning new things from the experiences. Uh, PTG may not remove distress completely, by enduring distress may coexist. So, some distress will still may remain and PTG may happen along with that. So, PTG will may not end your distress. So, that is the whole explanation of the model. So, very simply or more in a simpler term, if I want to show you, um, it will be like this. So, traumatic events. So, uh, very simply you can show it in with, with this diagram, where traumatic events leads to distress because of shattering of assumptive world and with the distress obviously, there is a intrusive thoughts, automatic thoughts, uh, which are basically PTSD stage where you know of post traumatic stress symptoms. And this distress uh, obviously, for initially it is required and obviously, then after sometimes it needs to reduce in terms of PTG to happen. So, reduction of distress is very important to come to the right frame of mind, which is actually promoted or facilitated by self disclosure and social support and other coping strategies. Uh, once the emotional reaction you know reduces, uh, one uh, you know slowly starts conscious reflecting thoughts and look at life and develops new narratives, which are basically you know are translated into PTG and uh, some distress may remain with PTG and it is kind of correlated or you know covariated with the wisdom kind of you learn new experiences of life. So, these are some of the uh, ways by which we can you know understand how PTG happens through this model. Another uh, model uh, which was also proposed by Joseph and Linley in 2005 uh, uh, to explain how PTG happens uh, that is this is called as organismic valuing theory of PTG. So, this theory was actually a uh, little bit different in terms of explanation where they uh, used the concept of humanistic psychology to understand how growth happens. So, according to humanistic psychology, you know, one thing is that you know uh, human beings have an inherent tendency to grow. 
so it's a kind of basic motivation that we all want to grow in our life uh, everybody irrespective of whether actually somebody does or not this motivation is there that we all want to expand and grow in our life nobody wants to kind of you know shrink and you know uh, not grow in their life so everybody is this motivation inner motivation is there in all of us and this in consistent with this inner motivation actually the psychological rebuilding that happens that we have uh, seen in the you know functional descriptive model is in accordance with that so we are since we are motivated to grow in our life so after trauma even though there are a lot of shatterings and you know uh you know distress you know meaninglessness happens after trauma but we still find a motivation to grow out of it and people that is why a lot of people experience ptsd so this inner motivation kinds of directs us towards that this model actually provides an explanation for why some people are able to achieve high levels of growth and why people fail to do so uh so in order to explain that you know uh they used uh, two concepts uh, one is called as assimilation and another is called as accommodation so assimilation basically you know assimilation and accommodation are uh, the two terms that was first used by uh, that were f- that were first used by uh, jen piaget in his cognitive development model um, where he say he basically tried to use the word assimilation to help us to understand that you know assimilation occurs when you know we encounter a new idea or new experiences in life and fit that idea with the existing knowledge so you have a existing knowledge base and you add one more knowledge to it so that is called as assimilation so it is more like uh, if you uh, if, if you use the analogy of our knowledge base as a container uh, and you add one more item in that container so that is an assimilation so adding new knowledge to the existing knowledge base is assimilation so for example a child you know uh, you know sees a dog and you know somebody teaches him so this and this is an this animal is called dog then next day she sh- sh- or that child finds out or looks at another dog which is of different shape or you know different color or whatever it is so child learns that there can be different types of dog so this is a kind of assimilation so you, she has a knowledge of dog about idea of no, dog and she adds on to that information so that is an assimilation accommodation on the other hand you know it occurs when existing knowledge structure is not or does not work in a situation and it needs to change to deal with the new information or the new experiences in life you know new object or situation so here the thing is that you you don't add new information to the existing container rather you have you change the shape of your container to fit the new knowledge so that is accommodation so it's more like you change the whole structure of your knowledge so old ideas are changed and replaced by new information in the accommodation process uh, so for example you know uh, you teach a child that uh, this animal is a dog and the and it has four legs so child learns that you know dog has four legs for sometimes the child may think that all four leg animals are called as dog but let's say next day she uh, or he or she sees a cat with four legs and uh, child may think this is a dog but somebody teaches them no this is another animal called cat so child will learn have to kind of change the existing structure of knowledge and say that you know not all four and anim- four legged animals are dog you know there is another animal called cat which may also has four legs so kind of existing knowledge structure is changed or replaced with new knowledge that not all four leg animals are dogs uh, there can be other animals like cat so this is an example of accommodation uh so they said in the theory that after traumatic experiences obviously new experiences and challenges comes in life some people may assimilate this new information simply they will add it to their existing structure though they, they don't change their mental structure simply say it is a new another experiences of my life 
So, such kind of assimilation experiences will help people to return to their pre trauma baseline. So, they will just you know recover from the traumatic experiences and go back to their pre existing or pre trauma levels of functioning. Accommodation can also happen after traumatic events where you kind of whole your mental structure changes and it may happen both in negative direction as well as positive directions. So, in negative accommodation you kind of change your whole knowledge structure because this information is so drastic that your whole idea of who you are, what is your future, how you relate to the world everything changes and shatters. So, this is accommodation. But it is if it is in the negative direction and you are not able to make sense of it for a long time and too much of distress, then all this pathology actually happens like PTSD symptoms and depression and all these things is a result of probably a negative accommodation. However, some people they engage in positive accommodation where you know, obviously there will be some this whole knowledge structure and is shattered and they rebuild those knowledge structure again, but in the positive direction in the sense that they learn from their experiences and see that they are kind of changed by this experience in terms of uh, you know, finding new strength, new understanding, new wisdom, uh, new meaning of life, uh, you know, etcetera, etcetera. So, those positive accommodation actually results into PTG. So, traumatic experience can uh, lead to all these consequences where person may not have any negative or positive consequences just recover, person may go in the negative direction and develop PTSD and other uh, psychological disorders, person may engage with positive accommodation and develop post traumatic growth and thrive in life. So, this theory also laid the emphasis on social environment as crucial factors in uh, for positive accommodation and post traumatic growth. So, if you have a proper social environment which kinds of helps you, nourishes you at that time when you are in the crisis like proper social support, unconditional support system, all this will help and facilitate PTG to happen. So, that social environment in which the person is placed is very important in terms of wh whether PTG happens or not. So, these are uh, some of the explanations of why and how PTG happens, uh, why some people report and why some people do not report. Uh, these are some of the possible explanations uh, we try to understand using these models. Okay. Now, we will see uh, what is the relationship between PTG and well being. Um, in general, uh, most of the reports or studies on PTG is uh, especially when maintained uh, shows that it, it predicts subsequent well being. So, PTG has been consistently linked with higher well being. For example, you know uh, one research shows that you know disaster workers who experience PTG tend to feel those who experience PTG in the context of disasters, uh, they tend to feel at least or report that they have gained in self esteem. So, their self esteem increased, a sense of accomplishment increased and meaningfulness in their life also increased and a better understanding of their work was also accomplished. So, these are all symptoms of better well being or increased well being. In a meta analysis of 87 studies on PTG actually show uh, with health outcome shows that PTG is positively related to measures of well being including self esteem, life satisfaction and it is negatively related to depression and other mental illnesses symptoms. So, in general most of the reports shows there is a positive relationship. So, if you have PTG you are more likely to experience well being also. Uh, there is another term that is very closely connected to uh, the concept of PTG is called as wisdom uh, and it, it was there in the model of uh, you know dysfunctional descriptive model also. So, wisdom is generally considered as a psychological maturity, you know. So, you become more mature that is actually that maturity is wisdom uh, that integrates cognitive, reflective and emotional personality traits. So, wisdom may have cognitive aspects, reflective aspects and emotional personality aspects also. So, the concept of wisdom often invokes the stereotype of old wise men, you know, generally you know 
this is an image that comes the wise men old men so people after a lot of life experiences they become more wise and they can counsel you with various problems of life so wisdom accumulates through life experiences it is always the life experiences that you that gives you the real wisdom uh, and it has been reported that age affects the depth of wisdom and that life wisdom advances with age so more we experience life situations more we become wiser generally this is what happens uh, wisdom can be differentiated from PTG so PTG is not same as wisdom these are two different constructs uh, wisdom is a broader concept uh, which can be found across lifespan and you know it can happen in various life situations normal life situations uh, and different experiences and it is not restricted to just traumatic events people may become wise after traumatic events but it is not restricted to it but PTG is always kinds of restricted to traumatic events. So, it happens as an outcome of traumatic events. Uh, generally, you know PTG was equated and covariated with the development of wisdom. Wisdom and PTG are kind of covariated in the model also of some functional descriptive model. In fact, most of the dimensions of PTG are kind of reflection of wisdom only. Uh, so although both PTG and wisdom have been conceptually linked, but not much empirical research has was done on in the in the in this direction. Uh, but few studies indicate that then there seems to be a positive relationship. Uh, but not much empirical uh, literature is available on that. Now the last topic uh, for today's lecture is facilitating PTG. Now we have understood the processes the statistics, the dimensions of PTG. And now, how can we facilitate it? How can we promote PTG in our life or after a traumatic event? How can it be facilitated? So, that is more important question. And Tedeschi and Calhoun, they tried to also address these questions, suggest that post-traumatic growth is facilitated by expert companionship. So, they use a term called expert companionship. Um, as a facilitator for PTG. So, what does that mean basically? So, expert companions are people who can listen for extended periods and repeatedly to stories that can involve horror, fear, guilt, shame and confusion. Expert companions cannot prescribe PTG, they do not prescribe that you know PTG should happen or not. They facilitate it through kind and empathic listening. So, they may be professionals, friends or family members. So, expert companions are basically you know people who can listen empathetically or with a kind ear, with a listening ear, active listening. Uh, so, many time uh, if people can explain that is why self disclosure part is very important you know and, and, and there are people around you who can you know, listen to your stories and problems you know, and they can at least empathetically listen to you uh, that itself can facilitate PTG in a big way uh, and uh, this can include your friend, your family members and also professional as well. Uh, so, this is how one most important thing for facilitating PTG. If you have an expert companion, it is more likely to happen. Uh, so, Calhoun and Tedesti also kind of explain it more in terms of giving more specific ways for you know facilitating PTG. So, they discussed five ways are possible uh, in order to facilitate PTG. Uh, one is obviously education, education in terms of trauma education. So, in order to facilitate growth, it is important to understand and educate oneself about the trauma. So, whether you yourself experiencing trauma or you are kind of helping somebody going through traumatic experiences, one thing is very important to understand that what trauma is all about and what it has done to you in terms of your mental experiences. So, that one thing is very clear that trauma destroys your core belief systems of your life. That is why it is so distressing. So, it is important to make sense of the trauma and understand what traumatic events, how it shattered your life assumptions and it is painful 
it may create confusion and frightening for some time anxiety experiences repetitive thinking hyper arousal all these symptoms may happen for some times and these are normal reaction to an abnormal situation and there is nothing wrong in it so understanding what trauma does and how it happens uh, is very crucial in terms of growing out of it because this is the way you process the trauma so if you don't process it you are not likely to grow out of it if you deny it if you don't simply avoid it avoidance will never lead to ptg so processing trauma going into it understanding what it is causing uh, is very important such processing are very important in terms of stimulating growth uh, an expert companion can facilitate such processing you know and one can do it oneself also if have enough motivation and understanding at that time so trauma education or understanding traumatic events are very important and how what it is causing to you is also very important so basically it helps you to first process the whole uh, the mechanisms that are happening within you second is obviously emotional regulation so that we have already discussed in the model also uh that you know for sometimes it will be very distressing there is no doubt about it and we process that information and it is very painful inform painful processing however if if it remains for a long time probably we may develop ptsd and other psychological disorders so it is also important that after sometimes we need to regulate those emotion learn to cope with them using various strategies coping strategies you know learn to manage those emotions are very important because this learning to manage them uh, will help us to come to our senses and right frame of mind and will help us to deli- uh, you know reflect on what is happening which is very important for ptg one needs to engage in constructive coping such as shifting thinking from loss and failures and uncertainties to more possibilities available resources to deal with so you can focus on all that aspect also not just what losses you have gained what uncertainties are there then what are the possibilities are there in that what are the resources that you have that by which you can deal with it so a shifting of attention is very important various kinds of coping mechanisms such as social support you know other like breathing exercises meditations all this can help you to manage your trauma at least so that it is not overwhelming anymore and it is at the manageable level so that you can reflect on and kind of move on to the next aspects of your life so emotion regulation is very important then obviously we have also discussed about self disclosure uh, it is always good to talk about what has happened some people not they don't disclose what has happened especially traumatic events and they keep it to themselves and by this way they are not able to process it properly in the positive directions and it kind of boils inside them and you know leads them to more psychopathologies so talking about it disclosing to other uh, is very important especially talking about what how are you struggling about it such self disclosure helps in processing of trauma and helps in finding solution of the problems if you don't talk about it, how will you find solutions about it and it increases the possibility of getting support from other people such self disclosure also facilitates meaning making process though you that so other will kind of also kinds of support you in terms of make sense of what has happened and reflective thinking which are crucial for post traumatic growth an expert companion can facilitate this process uh, by encouraging trauma survivors to disclose details so expert companion can facilitate in all these processes uh, so self disclosure can be facilitated by by, by an expert companion uh no by encouraging them to talk about it so that they can work together and find out what more meaning can be found out of it uh many uh, research also suggests that you know may even if you don't find somebody to talk about it even writing about it is also helpful writing let's say it in the form of diary writing where you write about your traumatic experience so it helps you to process information and manage emotions so you reflect about what has happened and write about it so writing about or expressive writing in terms of traumatic experiences can also facilitate post traumatic growth 
The fourth uh, way of facilitating PTG is narrative development, you know. So, rebuilding that happens after traumatic event of the mental structure and core life assumptions and that rebuilding is connected with the narrative developments. How you explain your life, how you tell stories about your life is if you develop a coherent storyline or narratives about your life, uh, especially a newer narratives because older narrative has shattered, how you see yourself, visualize yourself after the traumatic event and if it is a coherent positive narrative, a new narrative, it is more likely to incorporate many dimensions of post-traumatic growth. So, proper narrative development uh, can lead to post-traumatic growth. So, development of coherent life narrative is crucial uh, in order to proceed to the next chapter of life. Otherwise, people generally get stuck in the old narratives. My old life, past life, why it has happened, I am, no, I cannot let go of my past life. So, people get stuck in that old narrative. Uh, then PTG is not likely to happen. So, people kinds of disengage from that and not build, rebuild a new narratives about new perception of their life. Such narratives, coherent narratives are very important for PTG to happen. And the fifth is service is also very important. You know? It research shows that people who serve others or at least help others, benefit others or at least they support other people uh, in terms of you know, especially the trauma victims who are similar to themselves. So, if they engage in supporting other people, helping them in terms of in whatever ways, you know, in terms of listening to them it could be or in terms of you know, uh, supporting them let us say you know, in terms of building some organizations and you know, or creating supportive structure. So, whatever you know by helping others people also people grow out of it. So, the research very clearly shows you know secondary trauma we have uh, discussed in the last lecture that you know by looking at other people's trauma and how they grow out of it can also facilitate PTG. So, one, once you experience post traumatic growth after your traumatic e e event, traumatic experiences if you facilitate or at least support people or help people, benefit people or serve people who are similar to you or at least go, going through similar experiences or trauma, traumatic survivors, such services are likely to promote PTG in you also. So, that you do not just engage with your own PT world, you also uh, you know, kind of extend your support to others also. So, these are some of the ways by which PTG can be uh, facilitated and uh, in one life as well as it can these factors can help you to facilitate trauma survivors of other people you know, other trauma survivors. So, this so important crucial insights are very important. We can use them in our life and we can also use it to support other people. So, these are some of the important insights about positive dimensions of trauma and stress. So, it is not that all the time you know stress and trauma leads to negative aspect or negative uh, negative you know dimensions such as you know illnesses and disorders obviously it leads there is no doubt about it but there are some other aspects or positive dimensions to it that we try to look at in the last two lectures uh, so with this i will end today's lecture thank you